Welcome back. Last video, we talked about the inspector zone, and now it's time to move on to the lower zone. All right, so up here in the upper right-hand corner, if we click on our three-tab box in the center, that opens up our lower zone. This opens up a four-tab work area, the first of which is the mix console. This is a fully sizable but limited version of the full-size mix console app, giving you access to the most important mixer features, but when you need all the power and flexibility of the full-size mix console, simply hit the FN and F3 keys simultaneously on the Mac keyboard and toggle back and forth. And on a Windows keyboard, it will be insert plus F3, and you may need to enable the F lock button on a Windows keyboard as well to get to that function. Really handy to have both the track view and the mixer view open at the same time. On the left hand sides here, we can choose to see the faders, we can choose to see inserts, or we can choose to see just sends. And up here on the top box, this enables and disables the toolbar areas, and this allows us to do things like change configurations, hide the input channels, for example, if we don't need to see those. So very configurable just depends on the way you work here. That's the Mixer applet. On to the next tab, which is the editor. And the editor opens up the relevant editor for the selected track. For example, if I click on the audio track, the audio editor opens up. If I click on the MIDI track, the MIDI editor opens up. Now these can be linked in a project. So for example, by clicking this button here, this is the link button. In a regular configuration, I can be working on this and zoom in and zoom out, but sometimes it's very handy to have that link to our project window, especially if both of these windows are open at the same time. By clicking on that, it sizes the window in the track to link with the editor window. Now, no matter how I move or where I move, the project and the cursor are linked. Very handy when you're working on tracks and you wanna see the relevant data while you're editing. All right, the button right next to it are some scroll behaviors. So for example, if you want the project to scroll by and have the cursor scroll, it'll scroll normally like that. If I click this button here, the project will scroll by, but the cursor will stay stationary. So just depending on the way you work, that's very handy for working in a linear fashion where you're editing notes and moving on. You can also change the window layout. So for example, up here, if I click that little down arrow button, I can choose to show or hide the controller lanes area, and this allows me to see, for example, velocity. If I click over here where it's currently set to pitch bend and I move it up to velocity, I can see all the velocities of those parts. And by moving the zoom locators in either the project or the track view, because these are linked, it moves and syncs them in the same project as well. Very handy, very powerful, and currently showing the velocity here, the color basically shows you the cooler notes our lower velocities, as you can see down here, dark blue, dark purple, as the notes get hotter or red, they're higher velocities. One other thing to mention is that these two windows can have different tool states, which is very handy when you're working in a project and you don't want your tool configuration up here, which may be on pointer, for example, in your track view, to be the same down here in this area. If you're working for MIDI notes information, for example, and you have the eraser down here, you don't necessarily want the eraser up here. So these two windows can have different tool states. Next tab on our lower zone is the sampler control tab. This opens up a quick and easy to use drag and drop sampler. You literally can just click on a track, even a MIDI track, for example, and drag it into the sampler area. It will automatically mix down the audio from your soft synth and turn it into an instantly playable sampler that gets mapped to the keyboard. We simply choose the sample start and end parts. They can be anywhere in here, and it's instantly mapped to a keyboard down here. Lots of other stuff here to play with. We'll get into it later, but this is a really quick and convenient way to do remixing or to change or alter some of the sounds in your project. All right, moving on to the last tab, it's chord pads. This plays whatever the relevant soft synth happens to be selected in your project, if you have more than one. Currently, we only have the Halion Sonic track, which is playing a wordless or piano. So these pads will play that soft synth. The pads are completely configurable, and you can change the chords and the structures. You can even change the voicings by clicking the up and down arrow buttons. If you have more than one sound assigned to your soft synth, for example, we're using Halley and Sonic, which can have up to 16 different sounds. On MIDI channel two, we have a pipe organ. So for example, if you change the MIDI output on that selected channel to channel two, you were playing, you guessed it. 
Super fun. We'll get more into chord pads and chord tracks later. But that is the lower zone in a nutshell. In the next video, we are going to move on to the right zone. We'll see you then.